Sir Andrew, thank you very much indeed for joining us. Well, look, first of all, we have two very separate stories. Uh, Lukashenko's battle for survival in Belarus and indeed the Alexei Navalny story. Can we draw anything from these two very separate stories and say there is a common thematic here or there is something going on uh, that ties the two together? Good morning, sir. Good morning. Yes, you can draw a common theme because they are both in different ways connected with the insecurities of the Russian regime. Putin on the face of it has a huge following and Navalny on the face of it has far less. But there is an increase in debate within Russia as to where they're going and resistance to the effort of the Kremlin to impose a total uh, system of total control. Um Young Russians may not remember the chaos of the 1990s, but older Russians do, and that is why they have shown uh, a certain degree of support for the Russian president, when otherwise perhaps they may well themselves have been out on the streets or protested in other ways as well. Is the memory of Russians fading so that actually some of the strengths that Mr Putin draws on, uh, security and economic foundations, uh, are, are they um, receding somewhat actually for a lot of Russian voters and actually they're now beginning to question his previously unassailable position? Very certainly that is true. I, I, the um, difficulties of the 1990s were connected with the possibility of change. The ambition of Putin and his supporters is to prevent any change, which has, among other things, economic consequences. Um, his personal popularity rating remains quite high, but if you measure trust in Putin from general population, it's about 23% now. Uh, and the election, or not the election, the voting to confirm uh, proposed changes in the constitution, which would allow him to stay on for, uh, uh, in theory, at least till 2036, were heavily falsified. Much more falsified than others have been. Roughly 20 million false votes were issued, according to people who, who are, are expert in this field. Sir Andrew, people have talked about change at the top echelons of Russia many times. We all try to be what you are, really, which is an expert criminologist uh, and try to work out whether things are different this time round, whether the pressure is greater now on Mr Putin uh, and his close circle than different pressures from previous times. Is there anything that suggests that actually he is losing uh, a degree of grip on power that, 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 that basically he had previously that he hasn't got now? Yes, quite a lot. Uh, I've mentioned one, which is the the, uh, um, the question of how popular and how trusted he is. Uh, the very fact that the end result of the recent changes in the constitution is to increase the capacity and intention to repress opposition shows that he himself is um, has doubts, at least, in, into the strength of his hold on Russian popular support. What he has done is uh, to essentially to destroy all institutions like the, the, the parliament and so on and in effect also to remove the possibility of his being replaced at some time which is in the end a further blow to the constitutional setup.